welcome to another video. So I said, let me give another problem a shot from the G advanced examination. This is from 2022. There's just a lot of information provided. You can see how big and crazy the functions are, but I know that I know how to do a composition and I know how to take a limit. So I said, this is not going to be a tough one. And when I gave it a shot, it was actually easier than what I was thinking. Let's get into the video. So what we're looking for is the limit of a composition of two functions as x approaches alpha from the right. Well, um, the essence of this coming from the right will show up eventually if you pay attention to it. But again, it doesn't matter because alpha has to approach, I mean, x has to approach alpha from the right. That is, x has to be greater than alpha at any time. Otherwise, if x is smaller than alpha, what you're going to be having is a negative here, and you can't have a negative number as the argument of a logarithmic function. So that's the whole point of alpha, x approaching alpha from the right. So we know that f of g of x is basically, we're saying we're looking for f of, instead of writing x, we're going to be writing g of x in its place. So it's going to basically be the sine of pi over 12 times x. But instead of x here, we're going to have g of x. That's the meaning. So this is actually this expression. So all we have to do is multiply this, or we can write the limit as equal to the sine of pi over 12 multiplied by um, this function. Ooh, that's crazy. That's going to be 2. You know, uh, I'm thinking I don't want to write log base e. I want to write natural log because it saves me space. So I'm just going to write ln, ln of square root of x of alpha. And this has a parenthesis around it. This has a parenthesis around it. Okay, so this is what this is. This actually is this. So this is the limit we're about to take. So let's go. So we say that the limit as x approaches alpha from the right of f of g of x will be equal to the limit of this function. But what you notice is that the limit of a function is the function of the limit. You can actually move the limit inside as long as the limit exists. So I'm going to put the limit, instead of putting it at the beginning here, I'm going to put it here. But this again is just a constant, so I can move it further here. And I can actually simplify this. You know what? I'm going to simplify this immediately. 2 divides 12, that's going to be, because this is multiplication, so this is going to be pi over 6. So I'm going to write this as sine pi over 6 times, then what I have left here is just ln of the square root of x minus the square root of alpha over the natural log of e to the square root of x minus e to the square root of alpha. Oh, I forgot to put the limit sign. Okay, I fixed it and I wrote it nicely. So you know what, what we're doing. We're going to take the sign of whatever is inside when we're done. And this is pi over 6 times this limit. And we're taking just the limit of this expression as x approaches alpha from the right. So all we need to do is find this limit. So remember, whenever you want to take a limit, the first thing to do, is, is, especially when your limit is finite or where the point is finite, not infinity, you just plug in. But we can clearly see that you can't just plug in because when we plug in, we're going to have square root of x minus square root of x, okay? Or square root of alpha minus square root of alpha, which gives us zero. We can't have ln of zero. So on top, we cannot have ln of zero because that's going to give us if you take the limit, it's going to be negative infinity. Here, you're going to have the same thing. It's going to be zero because it should be ln. Oh, come on. This one has a parenthesis under. 
So this is going to be the same thing subtracted from itself. So we're going to have a situation of infinity over infinity, and that allows us to use L'Hopital's rule. We're going to say this is equal to the sine of pi over 6 multiplied by whatever we get when we take this limit. So the task we have now is to find this limit, okay? Using L'Hopital's rule, so I'm going to come back here. Let's use this space. If we want to take L'Hopital's rule, we're going to differentiate the top and differentiate the bottom, okay? So let's just do that for the bottom one. So by L'Hopital's rule, so we're going to say by L'Hopital's rule, um, by L'Hopital's rule, if we take the derivative of this, remember how to differentiate a natural log function. It is the derivative of the argument divided by the argument. So if we're going to differentiate this, well, this is going to go to zero. The derivative of square root of x is one over two times square root of x, right? So this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches this from the right. Here, the derivative here is going to be, look, we're going to differentiate square root of x minus square root of alpha. See, this is equal to the derivative of this, which is just going to be 1 over 2 square root of x. Now, as a calculus student, you have to know how to differentiate the square root of x. It shows up every time, okay? It is 1 over 2 times whatever you're differentiating times the derivative of the argument, which in this case is 1. So this is 1 over 2 times square root of x. 1 over 2 times the square root of x divided by the argument, which we can write as 1 over square root of x minus square root of alpha. It's the same thing. You differentiate, if you differentiate this, see this is a constant, e to the square root of alpha is a constant, because alpha is not a variable x. So this is going to go to zero, just like the top one, but the derivative of e to the square root of x is the same thing as e to the square root of x times the derivative of the top, which is 1 over 2 times the square root of x, divided by the argument, which we can write as 1 minus e to the square root of alpha. I'm writing so tiny here. I hope you can see it. So this is what we have. We have this, and we have this. But clearly, we can cancel these out. So this is going to cancel this, and this guy is going to flip up, and this guy is going to come down. What we're going to have here will be the same thing as e to the square root of x minus e to the square root of alpha divided by e to the square root of x times square root of x minus square root of alpha. Okay, so this drops down and stays next to this, and this one flips up. So that's what we're going to get. So this is the limit we're still computing. Let me still write it here. This is the limit as x approaches alpha from the right of this. But we don't know what it's going to be because we might need to use L'Hopital's rule again, but we don't know. Let's plug in alpha from the right. So these and these are going to be the same thing. And so we're still going to, we're going to get 0 over 0. So we still have to do L'Hopital's rule one more time. The derivative of this is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to alpha from the right. The derivative of this is going to be just the derivative of this. This is going to be 0. So we have, so we have e to the square root of x multiplied by the derivative of this, which is 1 over 2 root x. That's what you have. Now, what do you have under? This looks like it's going to be a product because this is the product of two functions. So we have to apply the product rule. Keep the first, differentiate the second, differentiate the first, keep the second. So we're going to say keep the first, e to the square root of x, and differentiate the second. If you differentiate this, you're going to get 1, that's times 1 over... 2 root x, okay, plus 
differentiate the first, which is going to be e to the square root of x times 1 over 2 root x. And then you keep the second. That's going to be rad x minus square root of alpha. Ah, that's crazy. I hope you can see that. So this is the part that is scary. But once you figure this out, everything else is going to clean up itself. Now, look at these two terms. What is common to this and this? You notice that e to the square root of x times 1 over 2 rad x is present here. It's present here. It's even present here. So you can divide that out of the top and the bottom. And what you have left here is going to be equal to, by L'Hopital's rule again, this is going to be the sine of pi over 6 times the limit as x approaches alpha from the right of, guess what is left? If we factor out this, pull it out, it's going to cancel this out. What's left here is going to be 1. On top, we're going to have 1 over. Down here, we're going to have 1. And here, this is what's going to be left, right? Yes, it's going to be plus square root of x minus square root of alpha. Nice. And what is this? If you take this limit by plugging in alpha, this is going to become square root of alpha minus square root of alpha, giving you zero. So you have one over one plus zero. If you take the sine of this, it is sine of, this is one pi over six. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.